Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Facebook Live today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in our audience. Uh, we will be talking today about Italian genealogy and researching your family history um, on MyHeritage and through other uh, platforms. And we are so excited about today's session. Uh, it is a ethnicity that we haven't really spoken about in a long time. And I know a lot of you are really looking forward to today's session. So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, if you're here tuning in, please let us know where you're joining us from. I see Colleen here from Queensland. Uh, Marco is really excited to have uh, a session on Italian genealogy. Uh, so please write in and let us know where you're tuning in from. Sue is joining us from Wisconsin early in the morning over there. Sylvie from Paris. Uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, please continue to let us know where you are joining us from today, what the weather's like over there, what time of day it is. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in for today's exciting session. Uh, we will be doing a giveaway today. We will be giving away a MyHeritage DNA kit to one lucky viewer. So in order to enter into our giveaway, please leave a comment in the comment section and let us know, you know, what surprised you from your, um, from, you know, a discovery that you made that surprised you, uh, whether it be, you know, an ethnicity that you didn't plan on having that you noticed in your um, ethnicity estimate from your DNA kit, uh, or maybe it was a different type of discovery, something that you found in the census record. Uh, please let us know what you've discovered that has surprised you, and you may be our lucky winner today to win a MyHeritage DNA kit. So we'll be giving that away later today. Let us know, of course, in the comments section. Uh, and throughout today's show, please leave us comments or questions. And we'd love to get to them at the end of today's session. Uh, I see Emma says, uh, the weather has been very cold in New South Wales. So I hope that uh, you're indoors and nice and warm. <laughs> Michael says he's joining us from Pittsburgh. Uh, let's see, we have Marco who's joining us from Southern Italy. So I'm sure this will be a very relevant session for you today. Uh, so we are just so excited to have this session for you all. Uh, we have joining us Sarah Gutman from Legacy Tree Genealogist, uh, a partner of my heritage, a research partner of ours. So we are just so thrilled to have her with us today. I'm gonna bring her on to say hello to all of you. Let's see if we can get her onto the screen here. Uh, normally it takes a moment. There we go. Hello. Hi, Esther. How are you? And hi, everybody on uh, Facebook Live. Nice to see you. I'm here from uh, New York, and it is 8 o'clock in the morning here, and I think about 70 degrees so far. So it's starting out to be a nice day, and I'm super excited to be able to talk Italian genealogy with everybody. Yeah, we're so thrilled to have you. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. And I'm looking over here in the comments and I see a lot of people coming from Italy and I'm super jealous that you're able to get <laughs> to those uh, great archives in person. And I'm gonna apologize ahead of time if I botch any Italian pronunciation. So if you're dealing with my New York accent and me being a native uh, English speaker. So apologize ahead of time. And by the way, my maiden name is Gadotti. So that I think gives me maybe a little more credibility than Gutman sometimes. But I am the, I spend all day long looking at the Italian archives with Legacy Tree and I help people get dual Italian citizenship. My kids and I uh, received dual Italian citizenship back in 2019. And we're from San Pagano Fiano in Salerno. That's where my family kind of stems from, that Salerno uh, Italian region. And I've been a genealogist, an unpaid genealogist, since I was 13 years old. So it was before the wow. day of the internet, and I just turned 40 in April. So I've been doing this for a while, and I'm super excited to be doing this with Legacy Tree. They're a great company. We have resources all over the place, and hopefully... I can help people out. And if you happen to know something that I don't know, I'd love to see it in the comments as well. 
Okay, great. So should I bring up your slides? Sure, bring them up. Okay, let's get these up. I'll let you know when. Okay, I think I see them. Um, there we go. Take okay. it away. Okay, well, welcome everybody. So we're going to be talking about Italian Genealogy 2.0. So this is really more for if you have been working with your Italian heritage for a while, or maybe you know already some information about them. Um, <clears throat> it's more for someone who's really ready to take that next step into researching their Italian heritage. So some of the things we're going to be talking about today is the importance of knowing the village that you're from, where to look for these records once you figure out where your family's actually from in Italy, some of the common words and phrases and formats that you're going to be seeing in these Italian records to prepare you to go look for that. We'll check out the Italian archive website, Antonati, and then we'll also take a look at what my heritage is doing over there. They've been putting up some of their own Italian links and there's more to come. So lots of great, exciting things. So that's what we're going to be looking at this morning or evening or whatever, wherever you are in the world, your time zone. So first thing we want to do when we're doing our research is try to figure out where your family's from in Italy. You need to know the exact village. One thing that we take for granted in America is a lot of times if I know that my family's from New York, I can pretty have a safe bet of knowing that, okay, I'm going to be able to look at a database. I could pop in New York and I am have a good chance of being able to find my family. But unfortunately, that's not the case yet over in Italy. We have to know the exact village that our family's coming from because we're going to have to be able to go into those actual resources, those links to get it. So if you are coming from, you I deal with, uh, work with Americans, so we need to look at our American documents to try to figure out where our family is coming from. If you're in a different country, you want to do all your investigation to find out where your immigrant ancestor has stemmed from. So there's some kind of tricks and tips to help you out with that to see where your family's coming from. Okay. And by the way, if you have any questions, I'm going to go back into the comments and, and reach out to them at the end of the presentation. So if I don't get to you when I'm done, um, please feel free to write your comment again. So I'm not ignoring you. I just can't see it while I'm doing this. So I apologize. So some of the things about where to look. We want to be looking in our, here we're looking in American records or where your immigrant ancestors come from. We want to look at birth, marriage, and death records, not just of the immigrant ancestor, but also of their children. They might be listing where the parents are from. And maybe the civil records don't have those that information. So check out the church records. A lot of times in America, people will come over as a group or they would meet up with people who they already know in the community over in America, and they would go to the same church. And if you might be able to look at some church records that might not have your ancestor, but maybe some of the other people in the community are coming from that same village in Italy. So that might be a clue to help you research as well. We want to look at passenger records, see where they're leaving from, where are they uh, saying that their place of birth was or their last place of residence. Maybe they've mentioned who is their last point of contact over in that country. We have draft cards for World War I and World War II over here in the U.S. And I love those because I think that's one of those hidden gems of where you can often find the actual individual naming the village that they came from over in Italy. Family Bibles is where people used to store where their family was from, all that great genealogy before we had websites like MyHeritage that allowed you to create a family tree. You would usually put your family tree in your family Bible. So see if maybe you or somebody else in your family might have access to a family Bible. Be that person who goes to a party and just they see them coming and they're like, oh gosh, here they come. They're going to be asking me about my family again. They wonder where that Bible was. Be that person. It's okay. 
old letters, old envelopes. Check the back of everything. No stone on turn. Uh, back of photos, flip them over if they might have mentioned that so-and-so is visiting from this country over or this town over in Italy might be a clue. Probate records, when somebody passes away, where are they going to leave their belongings or who are they sending that to? They might, again, name an address of an individual over in Italy, and that could be a clue. <clears throat> Obituaries, and again, don't forget to check the records of spouses, siblings, children. We want to really exhaust, if we can't find where our family's coming from, we want to exhaust our ancestors' fan club, their friends, associates, and neighbors, people who are signing off on marriages, people who are the witnesses of their naturalization records, and try to figure out where those people might be coming from if you can't find out where your actual ancestor originated from. So once you've figured out where your family is from over in Italy, <clears throat> you get to get the task of looking for those records. And one of the biggest obstacles, and I think that turns so many people off, is that these records are in Italian. And most people, especially over in America, don't speak Italian, don't read Italian. And when I started this journey, and I had my first look at Italian records, I had absolutely no idea what I was looking at. Um, a lot of these records are written in kind of an older style of handwriting. And I was actually very lucky because my uh, grandmother, who just passed away at 92 years old, she would always write me my Christmas cards and my birthday cards in the same type of handwriting. So I was used to it, which was very helpful. And you know, she's Italian. <clears throat> so there are a lot of trip, tricks and tips to get past that mind obstacle that you probably set up for yourself that oh, I don't speak Italian, I don't read Italian, I can't do this. But I'm here to tell you that, yes, you absolutely can do it. Um, you're going to be so proud of yourself. It's practice just like everything else. But what's really great about it is you're going to be able to see the same format over and over again. So we'll talk about some of the things that you want to prepare yourself going into looking at these records because you're going to see them. You're not have to – It's don't worry about learning how to go to a restaurant and order food properly. You just need to know enough Italian to get you through these records. And they're going to have the same template. So just keep looking at them. You're going to be so proud of yourself. You're going to be able to extract that information. So to prepare yourself to look at these Italian records, it's kind of like a little bit of a warm-up before you go on a marathon run or anything. And I've never gone on a marathon run, so I have nothing to compare this to, but I do know how to do the Italian. Uh, check out what the numbers are. They're going to be writing out the numerical numbers. And that also includes they're going to write out the entire year. Um, so get online and print out something that looks like this. This is from Woodward Italian, and it just has all the numbers just written out for you. And I keep this right on my computer because you know I have some hard time with this sometimes, and I have to go back and say, okay, what, what does this number look like? Okay, here it is that's giving it. And what's important about this, knowing the numbers, is not just recognizing the dates when events happen, but Italian records are really great that they oftentimes tell you the ages of the people's parents involved. And you can use that to go then further back into the records. So if you know the dad was 25 years old, mom was 26, you can do a little bit of math and hopefully find them in the records themselves. So you will see record, uh, numbers throughout. Oftentimes in Italy, they'll also give you the actual house number. You might be able to find out where the, the family was from uh, looking at the street number. And if you want to take it the next step, you can use the street number to go on Google Earth. And you can zoom in to see the actual or what now is the actual house that your family may have lived in, which is really fun and cool. And that's a great way to get your family uh, maybe who's not into genealogy involved. My kids love doing it. They're seven and six. 
and it's just a fun thing to do to see what the family your family used to live like we also want to be familiar with the months so again when you're up with the <clears throat> excuse me when you're looking with the dates also be familiar with the months a thing to know with italian months is they are not capitalized so i think you might be looking if you're used to having the months capitalized you might be looking at italian records looking for a clue for a capital letter but it's not going to be there so just keep that in mind as you're preparing yourself common words that we're going to be seeing we want to be familiar with some of these basic family words basic terms different words for child father mother parents husband wife name surname birth baptism marriage uh, bands index death burial and year just by knowing these actual terms are going to be really helpful for you to be able to identify what's going on in these records when you're looking at them some of the common occupations that's one of my italian families when they came over to america they started a grocery store and I always look at the meat in the window and i think they probably didn't do that great because it looks a little bit gross but some of the common professions that we're going to be seeing in these italian records uh, for barber shopkeeper day laborer farmer and i put those ones in bold because those are the ones that i think we see the most often that was the most common profession of individuals so if you see these professions you kind of get a little bit of a sense of what your family was doing during that time period um the upper class citizen a blacksmith a midwife a butcher a shepherd fisherman a tailor a landowner all these things are really great just to know so that you have an again an insight of what your family is doing and i always think it's really interesting too to see um if that occupation either has gone back several generations or if they maybe take that occupation into the next country that they're going into i often see this uh, with shoemakers and barbers and i love when i see that because it differentiates the family that way and it makes it easier to find them in these record collections so let's switch gears for a second and let's go to antonati which is the archives for the italian website and this came up i think about five years ago is when the first time that my family was able to be seen this and i remember i was on vacation I was in new jersey with my family and one of my genealogist friends sent me a message online and she's like the town that we're looking for is finally online she was helping my family so i spent the entire week where my family's in the beach I spent it in inside in air conditioning, just going through these Italian records. And that was my first time with Italian records. So I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And I was lucky enough that I had one of my genealogist friends and I could kind of, we could kind of compare notes. Oh, this is what I'm getting out of this record. What are you getting out of this? So if you can also find yourself a genealogist friend who can kind of help you out or you can help them out, Go for that because i always find that having two sets of eyes on these records are a lot more helpful than just one so first thing that i always do whenever i go to this website and the address of the website is right above here and i always switch it over to english uh because it just makes life a little bit easier I mean, obviously if you don't speak english you're not going to do that because that's really challenging um but I switched it over to English. I can also go onto Google Chrome and I have my browser set up so that if something is in Italian, it's automatically going to switch it into English. Now, don't get too excited because it does not switch the historical records over into English. It's just what you're seeing on the actual website here. So we got over here, I switch it down to English and now it says, a little bit a little bit better i can understand what's saying the access to the civil registries and name so it gives you a entrance field where you can put your family's name um, and location i personally 
don't, I don't know if it's just a personal preference of mine. I don't usually use this part. Um, you can write the actual town. You can write the year that you're looking on. But I like to kind of scroll past this and get to the map. That's where I like to go. So I like to go up here. I like to go over to the Browse the Archives button. And I like to do it that way. So I, again, you, it's a personal preference. You can put where you're looking for right over here. But again, I like to go to the Browse the Archives button and you get a view of this map here. Um, <clears throat> and what you have to do is when you find out when your fam where your family's from over in Italy, pop that into Wikipedia or Google it online, find a good website and find out the state that that village is in because you're going to need to know this when you're trying to look at the state archives. One, just as I live in right now, I live in uh, Long Island. I won't tell you the town that I live in, but I live in Long Island, New York. It's in Suffolk County. Um, just knowing those things like that, that information is going to help place our family better to find them. So I'm going to figure out the state archive that my family's going to. And in this case, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to hit the state archive of Salerno. So when you get to the state archive that your family is from, you can see they usually have one of these flags here that indicates the status of the records. And this is the green one. It is complete, super exciting. You can go explore. Uh, sometimes you might get partial and that's not necessarily partial for the place that you are looking at. They might've already had all the records from your village indexed or they might not have. Sometimes they say that it's waiting, it's scheduled. So you might have to do a little waiting or look on some other websites for that. But in this case, I'm super excited because it says that it's complete. So I can go check out the registry. So I'm going to go up to search registries. I'm going to click that button. And now over on the side, it's going to ask me what town am I looking at? So if you see here, I made a little arrow. And now to get to the actual village that I need, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to locations and I'm going to click that button. And I'm going to look at all the different villages in Salerno. And now I have to pick the village that my family is from. So in this case, I'm doing Pantagano Fiano. Nope, no, I'm not. I'm going to uh, Ponstiglione. I have several villages my family. I couldn't remember which one I did for this presentation. So now I'm in the village that my family is from. And once I'm in the, the village, I need to pick out the year that I'm interested in. And by the way, sometimes don't get too hung up on yourself if you don't know the actual year an event took place in. That's okay, because you could do some investigation work. Um, and it's easy enough to do with the Italian records. So we're going to click on the year that we want over here. And again, select the year that you want to look at. And then also we're going to have to figure out, okay, for this year, are we going to be looking at the marriage records, death records, birth records? Italians also have this really great collection of um, marriage bans, which is something that the church required that several weeks before leading up to the marriage. It's usually about two or three pages of information about the individuals getting married and their family. So that if anyone was to object to the marriage, they knew ahead of time that this wedding is happening, that they can put their two cents in. But if you can find the marriage bans and also read through it and get some great, you can get some great information out of that. So in this case, I'm going to be checking off the registry that I want to go to. And I'm going to choose this one right here. Now, this is the first page of this registry. And if you see here, it looks like you're going to have to um, click through every single page. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to actually do that because there's a much faster way to try to figure out if your family is in these Italian records. So the first thing we're going to do, again, we're clicking on the registry that we want. Once we get to the registry, go over all the way to the right-hand side, and you're going to see what looks like a book, and there's a line under there. Click that, okay? You're going to click that, and it's going to give you to this page where it has all the different pages 
that are available in this record book. Um, what you want to do is go to the very end, the last page or two of the record book, and you're going to click on that because that's going to most likely be your index. And that is a great way of being able to scan through these records to see if your family's in there. And if they are, you can go back to that page. So again, just to go back over that in case you missed it, you're going to get to the first page or whatever page you're going to go to this book with the underline, click on that, go to the last page of whatever is available. And by the way, if you see here, this isn't loading. You're not going to be able to see a thumbprint of the actual page. You're just going to see these icons. So there's really nothing on these actual pages, just a bunch of icons. So just go to that last page or last two pages in there. And you're going to be able to see the index. So in this case, I'm looking here for my family, Gadotti. And they're right down here, Gadotti, G-U-I-D-O-T-T-I. And it's going to give me the entry number that we're looking for. Sometimes they give you the date. Sometimes they give you the entry number. So knowing this entry number, I'm going to now go back to the index. And I'm going to try to click on where I think this entry number might be. And this is one of those things where you're kind of going in and out and seeing, OK, I'm further along, I'm back, whatever. Now, before I show you what the record looks like, again, I want to familiarize us with what we're going to see. And again, you can replay this presentation, you can look it up online, but they're going to be a format for each of these types of records. So with our birth record format, in most cases, we're going to, on the top, see the name, the date, and the entry number in the margin. Um, the date is going to be actually spelled out, the full date, full year. You're going to see the same part being repeated quite often in the first few lines, and that is the official agent and the locality. So it's the same person. He's just going to state who he is. He's going to state who he works for. And in this case, he's going to say was presented. Um, this person came before me to present this child. They're going to say the gender of the child, the occupation and the parentage, again, of the civil agent. They're going to tell us, hopefully, the child's father's name, his occupation, uh, and maybe if we're lucky, we also might get to know the father's father's name. So we might be able to see the grandpa of the child being born, which is pretty cool. The place of birth. And again, this place can also be an actual house number. So you can go on Google Earth and you can figure out where exactly that this individual in your family was born. You're going to see the legitimacy of this birth if the couple was married, if the couple was not married. The child's mother will be able to find out some, her age, her occupation, hopefully her father's name, and her place of birth. We get to see the child's birth date and place, the child's name, the witness who is signing off on this. And if you, and again, this might be two pages, who knows? Uh, you might be able to see the signatures of your ancestors, which is really, really cool to see. See if they have that, maybe that original spelling that you also have with your name. Have they changed it? Uh, see what that looks like. So here's a format of one of my family members with Lorenzo Frigetta. And if we're looking at our records here, you can see the name of the child is over in the margin with the date. And in this case, we're looking down here. Uh, my computer screen's pretty small that I'm looking at, so I was looking at the wrong person actually first. So anyway. We're looking at the date. So this is September 8th, 16, six, uh, 1869. I wish I was able to trace my family back to 1669. Um, Ponce de Glione, Salerno in Italy. So again, we have Lorenzo Fragetta right over here. So if you're looking at these records and you're trying to go through the pages fast, you don't have to read all this. You just have to hop over to the margin, see if you see your family's name in most cases. So a little bit of going into the actual record. Zoom in and as best as you can. And you're going to see the name of the town <clears throat> right here that he's in the community of Ponce de Glione. We see his father's name, Vincenzo. 
and that he was the son of Antonio, that he is 25 years old, uh, that he lives in Ponce de Glione, that he is, we have, he's presented a son here. We have his profession. Um, so we have a lot of great stuff coming from this actual record. If we just dive in, think of this one or two sentences is just so full of information and really can hold so many ways of just breaking down brick walls. It's, it's really great stuff that you're seeing in here. Um, continuing on to the next page, his wife is Carmela Palladino, and she is the daughter of Carmine. We have that the baby was born on Santa Maria Street, and the child's name is going to be Lorenzo. And again, we see the actual spelling or the <clears throat> the actual signature of the the father right here. Um, and what's actually kind of interesting to me is the signature here. He signs his name for Jetty, not. For Jetta, and that's actually going to be the name that the family is going to use over in America. So, just to recap some of the extracted information that we were able to get from that record, was Lorenzo Forgetta was born September 11th, 1869, on Via, Mar Via Saint Maria Ponstiglione. His father was Vincenzo Forgetta, the son of Antonio. Vincenzo is a 25-year-old landowner who lives in Ponce de Glione. We have his mother, Carmela Palladino, daughter of Carmine, wife of Vincenzo Fragetta. So, so much great stuff here. Um, and using this, I think sometimes people get really excited and they just walk away. Look at all this great information. But this is a springboard into so much more by knowing the date of when, how old his dad is. We can go and we can start searching some of those birth records. And that could lead us, again, to more information on Antonio, his father, who the mother was. Same thing with Carmela. We can go look for them. We can go find a marriage record. So we kind of have a sense of when this couple might have been married, probably in the previous five years. Do they have any more children? All this great stuff that can just totally lead you down a rabbit hole. And like I said before, I was on vacation with my family. You'll just never see your family on a family vacation. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to get away from other people as well by looking at these Italian records and diving into them. So great news. My Heritage has a bunch of Italian records and they're always adding more. So um, if you go to the My Heritage site, and there's, again, so many wonderful resources over here, click on the research button. And that research button is going to give you a drop down menu. And what we want to do is go to search all records. So we're going to go to my heritage, go to search my records, and pop in the word, oops, skipped something. Pop in the word Italy. Oh, there it is, right here. I knew I had it. Pop in the word Italy. And you're going to get 16, as of when I did this a few weeks ago, we had 16 collections for Italy available. Now, keep in mind, my heritage is busy working on this right now. So they don't have all of those records that Antonani might have. Um, they're still adding a lot of villages that are there, but they do have a lot of great stuff and they're constantly adding more. So play around with it. You can go into the Italian birth and baptism records, click on the website or click on it. And once you get in there, you're going to put as much information as you know about your family. So here I just put in Gadotti. I wanted to see what the family has, what's available on the family. Maybe they've covered my area. Maybe they're going to get to it. Um, and I know that they're in Salerno. So I'm just kind of leaving it at that. And some of the information that they have, they do have some Gadotti's in there from different parts of Italy. So you can click on that. Again, you're looking for your exact family member. Um, you want to never make sure that you're climbing somebody else's tree. So don't get too excited if you see somebody has the same name. A lot of the names do repeat. So we also, again, want to make sure we've narrowed down our village of origin. But if you find your family member, you think you found them, go in there. And what I love that my heritage has done 
is they have transcribed those hard to read Italian records. So they've really taken that hard work out of there for you, which is awesome. Um, they've put in the birthday, they have the names of the parents in there. They give you reference numbers so that you can then go back and you can find that actual record. So you, it's again, we're not seeing yet the ages of the parents, some of the other stuff, but they're giving you that link so that you can go in and you can dive in and get more information from there. Um, so it's super great. They're really ahead of the game with this. Um, lots of fun stuff. And they're always adding things. So if maybe you've checked it this week, they haven't gotten to your village yet, maybe it's there next week or it's just coming down the pike. So just keep running your family through it. You might be able to find something. Um, really great stuff here that the people over at My Heritage. So uh, Esther, if you don't mind, I'd love to get to some of the comments in the chat. If you want to take away my screen and show me again, that's fine. Okay, so first of all, thank you so much, Sarah. And we did um, oh, we did receive some questions in the comments uh, section, so we'd love to take a few of those if that's okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so Sylvie asks uh, for some cities. Um, and, and my pronunciation is not going to be as good as, as yours, for sure. Well, and there's a lot of people that were in Italy, so. And birth information is not available after 1915. Well, we should have them up to 1922 now, 100 years after, as per the law. My father-in-law was born in 1916, and I can't get his birth certificate. Do you know when it will be updated? Thank you. That's a great question. And I'll tell you right now, New York is the same way. New York's actually worse <laughs> with, with not putting that in there. Um, again, it's as it's one of those things where it should be there, but it's not there. So what you could do is, again, re, if you haven't done so already, reach out to that village, try to get that information from you. I find a lot of times they actually respond pretty well to faxes. Um, and Legacy Tree, we help people all the, all day long uh, get that information. Um, we have people over in Italy who are able to go and physically get them from the archives. who are able to get transcriptions. They're able to get actual records. Whatever you need, we usually are able to get them for you. And if they're not available um, from, on a civil registry level, maybe you've gone further back, we also have people who will go in and they'll work with uh, parish priests and get baptismal records and marriage records there. And they can go back sometimes into the 1600s, which is amazing, um, which is better even than I've done with my family. So good, good for you. Uh, there's lots of great stuff. So hopefully if you can't get it yourself, you're welcome to always contact Legacy Tree and see what we can help you out with, too, to get those records for you. Um, let's see some of the other ones on there. I see a question here from Marco. Uh, Marco asked, uh, in my case, some years in the late 1800s are missing on Antonati and family search for the commune uh, or municipality of Gandale. Do you know how long it will take for them to be available? Well, unfortunately, sometimes if what you're seeing, I found, is if you're seeing that a lot of the villages around there are missing a certain time period, or it says that they are complete, that the indexing is complete for that area, um, those records might not be available. Uh, there may have been some type of fire. There may have been a tsunami, which is a big problem that they had over in Sicily. A lot of records were destroyed with the tsunami, water damage. If you're not seeing um, those records and they should be there, there's probably a good reason why they very well might, again, might have been destroyed. Um, this is something else that we do at Legacy Tree. We have access again to people who are on the ground over there who can give us a pretty quick answer that this is available, this isn't available. And mainly on these databases, we're looking at civil records. Not everybody's gotten their church record. Most people have not gotten their church record. So if you're not finding them on the civil record, again, 
we're able to check over in the church as well. Um, looking over at some of the other ones, I see David said, I have 2% Italian ethnicity on my DNA. Should I be looking into 1.0? So a lot of times with these DNA stuff, I always tell people, do not get hung up on them. We really want to be focusing on our matches rather than the actual ethnicity that it's telling us. Again, I'm going to say that again. We want to be focusing on our matches, not necessarily where our family is coming from, because your ancestry results or your my heritage results or 23 I mean, whatever you're using is going to change. And they usually change every five months. So don't go out and get a tattoo of where your family is coming from. I've seen this more than once happen. Um, based on the population they're using, based on the technology you're using, your DNA is going to switch. I was like 50% Swedish for a while. I don't have anybody in my family who I've been able to trace back to Sweden. And I've gone into the 1700s. So again, don't get too attached to them. Just kind of take it with a grain of salt and just look for the paper trail. That paper trail is where you're going to really find those answers. Remember, DNA is not the X that marks the spot. It's just a clue, just like it is. And there's, again, just please take it with a grain of salt. Um, we have a, another question here from uh, Rosemary, and she asks, uh, my great grandparents are from Palermo. I have a translated copy of their wedding promise from 1864. Ooh. He is from Aqua Santa. I have not been able to locate the town. Any advice for uh, for Rosemary? Hmm. So if he's from there. I would be curious to also see the birth records of their children if they're saying where the, the parents are coming from. Um, does he have any siblings that maybe were also married in the same area? Keep in mind, too, that literacy is not something that everybody had. Um, my family was spelling the name of a place, for example. I, for years, I was looking for my Italian relatives in this one town um, based on a, a naturalization record. That name was being spelled phonetically. And that the name was not being spelled correctly. So say the, that name to yourself. See how it might have sound. Say it almost with like an Italian accent. See if you can figure out, is there another town that maybe sounds like that, that looks like that, uh, that might have that name in there. And again, use your ancestors fan club, those friends, associates, neighbors, anybody else coming from that area. If they're coming from an area to see if there is a smaller village to that or if it's from a larger part. My family is from such a small village that their record collection doesn't exist. They were kind of grandfathered into another town. So I did not find the records where I thought my family was going to be. They were in the bigger municipality for that. So look at a map. Um, I like to use one of the Italian gazetteers to do some research to see if it's incorporated into anything else and reach out to those communities to also try to find the records as well. That's great advice. Um, and now I think we'll take, uh, we'll give away our DNA kit to one lucky viewer in the audience. That's a great prize. <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic prize and a great way to kind of jumpstart your research. And, yeah. uh, and I love what you said about, you know, differentiating between ethnicity, uh, versus your matches and really, you know, categorizing your matches and where they're from and looking at that and uh, such great advice. Uh, do you have any um, last advice before we do our giveaway? Sam? Yeah, just just keep going. Don't don't get frustrated and just keep checking back. So and enjoy whoever wins this. I'm super jealous. So <laughs> good for you guys, thank you so much for hosting. Amazing. This is incredible. Um, so our, our winner today is Amy Dela. And Amy wrote to us and she said, my husband's ancestors were from Piedmont, Naples, and Sicily. So um, so hopefully with the DNA test, you know, you'll be able to test another member of the family, Amy. Uh, and just send us a message to our Facebook page to uh, claim your prize. 
Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. We we had such a great time. This was such a fantastic session. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for joining. I appreciate it. Thank you, Esther. And we hope you all have a nice day, no matter where you're located. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.